Hey guys, welcome back. One thing we forgot when doing refactoring in the last video is we forgot to refactor the app component. Now at this moment, the app component is a stateful component, meaning that it's basically created as a class and it works perfectly fine. There's no issues with the app whatsoever. The countdown timer works just fine. But if you watched the previous episodes, you probably heard me saying that one of the disadvantages of stateful components is that they're a bit slower than the functional components. And although we get a lot of benefits from the lifecycle hooks and all the other functionality, stateful components are still a bit slower than functional components. So without further ado, let's just convert this component to a functional component. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say constant app equals, let's do, in this case, let's have props, although we don't have any props. We're not passing any props from index.js, right? Although we could. But let's just have that and um, let's do return. Actually, I'm just going to put this countdown directly like so. So this is going to be an arrow function that basically returns a countdown. And I'm gonna remove the old code like so. Let's save it, let's go back to the browser. This is still going to work. Now, of course, we have a warning. The component here, a named import, we no longer need it, so I'll just kill it. And let's save that. Now, as you can see here, the app component itself is sort of superficial, or you might say useless here, because it's really not doing anything. It's sort of like a wrapper for the countdown component. The countdown component is where the meat of the project resides. At this point, it's sort of like just a wrapper around the countdown component, which actually houses all of the internal logic of the application. So one thing you could do is you could just simply remove the app component, right? So what we could do is instead of importing the app in here, we could have just imported the countdown itself. And the application would still be functional, it would be fine. But when it comes to larger applications, typically you'd have more than one component. So countdown is one, but you might have other ones. You know, you might have an application that has a navigation bar, you know, a footer, or you might have, you know, other components or other behaviors that you want to include. In that case, it would make sense to have the app component and the app component would basically act as a wrapper or basically as a glue for all those different components that you want to glue up together, to tie up together in a single application. In that sense, it makes a lot of sense to have the app component. For now, I'm just gonna keep it because typically for most projects you would have it. But like I said, again, it's up to you and if you don't want to clog your application with that extra component, or extra wrapper, you could just simply remove it. It's up to you. All right, so with that out of the way, let's move on to forms in React. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new file here and let's call it date picker JS. Now the idea here for the date picker, like I mentioned in the previous video, is you want to have a form and you want to have an input where you type a date, you click submit, and then that date is going to be used in the calculation of the countdown timer, right? So instead of having the date of now and the date of new year, we, we want to replace the new year date with the date that the user types to the input box. So we're going to have to refactor the app quite a bit, but we're going to start with the date picker. So the first thing we'll do, let's do import react from react. Next, uh, let's create the component. Let's do constant date picker. It'll be a functional component for now. And let's see, so we are using Bulma here in this project. So I'm gonna to go to the Bulma documentation and let's go to, let's see, docs, let's go to form. If you scroll down, there's obviously a lot of different examples here. The one that I'm looking for is the one that basically uses an input with a button. So let's just copy this block of code. It's basically a field that contains two paragraphs. One of the paragraphs contains the input. The other one will include a button. This is precisely what we want. We're gonna tweak it a little bit, but let's uh, let's just put it in for now. I'm gonna fix the indentation here. And the reason you see mismatch of colors is because in React, whenever you have a tag, it always needs to be closed. It's a bit different from HTML because HTML is more permissive and it's actually going to forgive you for, let's say, not closing tags properly. Like for example, here I have a div. In normal HTML, if I didn't have the closing, um, the closing forward slash, it would still work in normal HTML, but it's not going to work in React. And like I said, the reason you have color mismatch here is because we, we need to close the input right there. We need to put the forward slash. And this, uh, and this rule applies to things like image tags 
and things of that nature. Right, so we're going to save that. And of course, like I said, we need to replace classes with class name. Very important because we're using JSX here. And class is a reserved keyword in JavaScript. It refers to an ES6 class. The keyword itself was reserved even in ES5, but it was actually being used as of ES6 for classes. So we need to replace that. So with that being saved, let's go to index.js. So let's actually move moment here to the top. And for our component, let's do import date picker from date picker. Now let's go down. Let's see. So we're probably going to put the date picker just below the timer. So we'll do date picker, close it off. Again, you have to close the tag. Be careful. Don't forget the forward slash. And let's go back to the browser. Okay, export default. Okay, I think we forgot to put the export statement. Of course, export default date picker. And there we go. So the reason that the date picker takes full width is because of the class that we added. Actually, I'm going to remove is expanded. This will make the input box as well as the button expand as much as possible. That's not exactly what we want, so I'm going to kill that for now. And let's actually center this. Now there is a class for centering uh, groups. Let's actually look for that class in the documentation. Centered, I'm just going to put a dash, has add-on centered, let's see, let's keep searching. There we go. Is group centered, I think we've used this class before. So if I apply that class to the field, let's do is grouped centered. Okay, let's save that. If we go back, the the field is basically going to be centered just like we wanted. And as you can see here, it would be nice if we were able to add some margin at the bottom or padding for that matter. I think what I'm going to do is we're just going to go back to the editor in a second. But if I were to add, let's say, 40 pixels, yeah, I think that would look much better. Let's actually go back. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a style property. Now, the style is similar to the inline styling that you would typically do in HTML. And of course, we could create a separate CSS file and then import that file to apply the styling. But at this point, there's only one simple style that we want to apply. We just want to set margin bottom. Let's say we wanted to have it 40 pixels. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it. I don't need to create a separate file for that. So inline styling, again, there's pros and cons to that, but I think it's just fine for now. So I'm going to keep it that way. And here we need to be careful because, okay, so the thing is, when you put two curly braces, this is basically going to expect an expression. So the expression that we need is an object. So in this case, you need to put the curly braces again. And these curly braces represent the object. The object has a property margin bottom set to 40. And of course, besides that, you could also do you know, 40 pixels. It's going to have the exact same effect and you could remove it, it's just going to default to pixels by itself. Now let's continue tweaking the styling here. One thing I'll do is the type attribute is optional, so we don't actually need to include it, we don't have to. And then I'll do, let's say, type a date for the placeholder. Next I'll do, let's say, is medium. That's gonna make the input a little bit larger. There's also another class that's been added in version 0.6.2. And this class is called is rounded, and that's going to make the input rounded like this. So I'm just going to add that class also. Let's do is rounded. And for the button, I'm going to do, let's do is light. Let's see how this works. Okay, so the input is going to be rounded. The button is going to be light. I'll also add a class is outlined. And I'm also going to add a class, let's do is medium, as well as is rounded. And of course, if you are confused about the classes, feel free to go back to the documentation. Specifically for buttons, you would go to elements, button, let's see, the rounded. We've already used this class before, but this is just basically going to make the button rounded. For the colors, there's a bunch of them. Um, let's see, you have primary, you have primary, you have link, you have info, success, warning, danger, but there's also, you know, white, light, dark, black, and a simple text. And lastly, the one I used is also is outlined. This is just basically going to apply that, that type of styling to the button. And this is saved. Let's go back to the app. This is what it looks like. So we have an input and we have a button. Let's rename the button. 
let's do instead of search, let's do reset. And also, I'm not going to have an anchor, I'm actually going to have a button, okay? And next, I'd like this to be a form as well. So let's do form. Everything else in here is going to be wrapped inside of that form. So let's pluck this div. Let's uh, inject it in there. Okay, so let's save that. And there we go. This is a form with an input like this and also a button.